To Caldwell Pope inside, he's tied up by Green. Throws it back up top. James puts up the three. Oh, it's good! LeBron James from downtown as the shot clock expires. Welcome. Welcome back. I don't know when we're going to begin this or how this is going to begin, but fuck it. It's a beautiful day for basketball, that's right. I'm your host, Jordan Fisher, joined by my producer, good friend, colleague, and co-host today, Justin Ricardo. What's up? And we're here to talk some basketball with you guys. So, today we're going to recap the play tournament, the first ever NBA uh, play tournament. Uh, that is ultimately determining seed seven and eight for the playoffs. It's been amazing so far. I'm not going to lie. I've had no issues. It's produced some great basketball. We've seen Jason Tatum ball out. We saw Steph Curry perform some magic. The Grizzlies being great, being young, being exciting. Uh, you know, it's been everything we really could have hoped for. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it really hasn't disappointed. I mean, it's it's been tough as a Laker fan to watch <laughs> the Lakers be so bad but anyway you know it's it's great for the league and hopefully it continues to be great for the league um, for many years to come so looking at the games in the Eastern Conference we had the Wizards and the Celtics play and uh, that game was wild uh, Jason Tatum t- dropped 50 points uh, in a much needed 50 point effort to knock the Wizards uh not necessarily out of the play in tournament, just, you know, potentially back a game, seeing that they'll have another chance to earn the eighth seed um, by potentially producing a win against Indiana. Uh, the Wizards ultimately lost that game against Boston, 118 to 100 even. Uh, Russell Westbrook went off, Bradley Beal went off, just wasn't enough. What can you expect yeah. like, from those guys? Anything else? No, no, not at all. But what I didn't expect was for Jason Tatum to step up and just be such a big time player. Fifty burger. Yet again, dude. I mean, dude, just is just is more than certified. Like he's proven it time and time again. He's legit. He's he's that guy that can really lead and carry a team. And um, really, to my point, is like, what are they doing in the seventh seed in the East? A very weak Eastern Conference, mind you, at that. Like, Brutal. Absolutely terrible. Brad's, like, I don't know who to blame, but somebody deserves some blame there. Like, the GM, the owner, and management, somebody has to take a look in the mirror and be like, why do we suck? Because they really shouldn't suck this bad. They have like, so much talent, bro. They have so much talent. Yeah, and they have one of the best basketball minds, uh, you know, on the 90-foot hard floor, it's just... We'll see. We'll really see how they do and if they'll be able to come out and live up to all these expectations that we're really placing on them because we just... We want to see them be better. We have so much talent. Why do you, Why are you in the seventh seed in the East? Uh, moving on. Indiana beat uh, the Hornets, which cool. is... That was a rough game. That was a rough game for any Charlotte Hornets fan to watch. They got absolutely hammered. The final score was 144 to 117. And you know that additional 117 came in garbage time. It was like... That score sounds bad, and it was even worse. It was so (laughs) much worse. So, um, you know, it was really exciting to see LaMelo Ball and this young Hornets team... Uh, just play so well throughout the season, but this is a good loss for them. They need this experience. They need some post game, a taste of the post game uh, or post season. And I, I really don't think they were in a position to experience the intensity of a post season, uh, potentially for two to three years. And the, you know, the play in tournament definitely expedited potentially their timeline for growth, seeing that they have more extreme and high pressure games under their belt now so it's going to be great to see like what it ultimately does for this young team moving forward and how they continue to develop and mature we have a lot of things to be excited about if you're a, a 
Hornets fan at the end of the day. Yeah, the Mellow's great. Great draft pick. You should really go for Lonzo. If you guys don't sign Lonzo, why? It, matter of fact, go get Jello. Just just do it. Like what what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Ticket sales bullshit. Yeah, honestly, you're you're gonna sell out every game. People are gonna fly to Charlotte to go watch the Ball Brothers play. Like they already have a massive following, a big fan base, and it would just be you know let's give Leangelo a shot. Why not? Put him <laughs> on the G League team and the, the Pistons tried it out. Yeah. And they cut him for really no reason. That Absolutely franchise is a mess. Yeah, Sorry, I Justin. Agree. I agree. But you know, why not? Lamelo is balling out, Lonzo's playing much better better. Just let them see if they can do their thing on a professional floor. Like, what's the risk? Like, that 10-day contract? It's G League roster spot that we're apparently giving out to people? Like, I don't know. It's a kid can play. He, like, made a UCLA roster. Like, that's, there's something to be said about that. Give him a shot. Sign Leandro. And go for Lonzo. Uh, you know. So... That team's going to be exciting in the next few years. Yeah, that team's going to be really, really fun to watch. And as that young core continues to develop and build more rapport and chemistry, they, they're just going to be dangerous. Um, so who do we got coming out of this Wizards-Pacers uh, game? It's a really tough matchup. Um, the Pacers are really talented. I don't know why they're floundering in this position. Like, they've they underwent a trade uh, to acquire Karis LeVert halfway through the season, and anytime you move massive pieces and acquire talent like that, there's going to be some adjustment periods, and it's just has taken the Pacers a lot longer to find their groove as a team than I really thought, which is why I didn't think they'd be a threat come playing tournament time. But, you know, they played great against uh, Charlotte, and Sabonis is nice. Karis LeBert is nice. Like, they still have Malcolm Brogdon. Like, the team's super talented. Miles Turner's solid. Yeah, Miles Turner's solid. Like, the team's really good. They can make some noise in a really not strong conference. Um, I think they match up well against the Wizards. They have a lot of guys that can guard, uh, you know, Brad and Russ from Karras to Brogdon uh, to even McConnell. Like, they, they're, yeah, McConnell's they're deep. a dog. Like, they're, they're just deep. They have great rotational players, and, you know, they're a Larry Bird franchise. Like, that team is really good. You can't count them out. And I, I know it's really bullish on the Wizards, but that last game against the Celtics was a game for them. This game... Might be a little tougher. I don't know. They just have a lot more matchup issues. So let's move to the Western Conference. We have the Grizzlies uh, play the Spurs in the 9-10 matchup. And, you know... Yeah. Real good game in 2004-2005. Final score, 100-96. to Like, a lot of dunks, a lot of mid-range shots. Just great fundamental basketball. Love to see it. I uh, feel really bad for DeMar. Um... Free Damar. Yeah, free Damar. Get Damar a time machine so he can go be the all-NBA first team player he deserves to be in 2005. If he were around just like a few years earlier. Yeah, like during the Vince Carter, Trace McGrady. God, like, he, yeah. He would have been, I mean, he's, don't get me wrong, he's sick. He'd be a household name. He wouldn't be just, like, commonly forgotten. He's a four-time All-Star. Yeah. He would be a 12-time All-Star. And a transcendent, like, face for basketball. But he just came in this post-Steph Curry area of basketball where, you know, so much weight is predicated on a three. Um, anyway, that game was cool. Uh, Jonas Valenciunas went off, put up 23-23. and 23. And they looked really good. Like, Dylan Brooks had 20-plus points. Jaw had 20 points. This this team is scary. Um, and young. They're young. They're athletic. They play hard. They're going to be a lot of fun to watch, too, moving forward. I think 
uh, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So in our second game in the Western Conference in the uh, seven and eight matchup, we had the Warriors and the Lakers play, and the Lakers narrowly squeaked out a win, 103 to 100, after being down for a majority of the game. And I just want to reiterate a point here. Referees should be fined for just bullshit and stupid calls. The like, amount of phantom charge calls. Oh my god. Like, it didn't exist. Just so many bad calls, no call, Inconsistent, no calls, just... It, it just hurts to watch sometimes. Like, when you have the commentators just blatantly disagreeing with whatever is called on the floor, and most people at home... If any just general basketball knowledge are just sitting here saying like yes this is clearly this I'm not saying that being an official is an easy job I understand it's much different when you're witnessing things on the floor and in real time but you guys take fucking 50 minutes to review everything in the first place so A have the decency to get it right when you go back to the replay booth and just watch that shit over and just make us watch you guys look at a screen for 30 minutes that takes way too long you guys should have a shot clock even on your own review booths. Two. That's one of the best things I've ever said about changing the NBA is having a shot clock on the NBA review. They gotta make up so, their minds. That's so right. They gotta make up their minds because that takes way too long. Number two. Referees deserve to get fined. You guys are out here calling bullshit ass technical calls, technical fouls on players that, you know, sometimes they're. Fringe players, they don't have fat contracts and they can't pay the fines associated with being levied a technical foul. You guys are fucking up these people's money because what? they You didn't like what they said or they di disagreed with a call like a little too aggressively for you because you probably made the wrong call to begin with? It's like, get over yourself. Get over your ego. If you're that confident in your call, put your money where your mouth is. Don't just hide behind the league. Uh, and that's another thing. If people voice their frustrations with you, they get fined. That's, that's bullshit. That is trash. Rest deserve to get fined because you guys are too important to just hide behind this curtain of, um, well, like the league should protect us. We should, we don't, we're trying to be a faceless, non-biased organization or association. No, 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 no. We need to start fucking your money up every time you make mistakes. Could you imagine? And you need to be held accountable for all your mistakes. Could you imagine if, like, yeah, Bob Joss would find 5K for that phantom charge call? Yeah. It's a, it's a 16th of his salary. <laughs> I mean, you can make it proportionate. Even $500 would be fine. Because people are getting thrown out of games unnecessarily, like, ruining fan experiences. Fans save up to attend games. You know, that could be three years, two years worth of work for some families. Like, that could be a big deal. You go to a game, your favorite player gets thrown out over some trash. Not, like, tr like actual trash. And, you know, there goes the whole experience. Or at least you remember it as a game where you spend a whole lot of money to watch your favorite player get ejected. So And then watch your team lose because your star players ripped off the plate. Be because... The referees didn't like how that person responded to probably what was a terrible call to begin with. So, I don't know. Be better, referees. Um, so, yeah. The officiating was a bit suspect at times. Uh, on both sides. I'm not just saying it was like, oh, really bad call game for the Lakers. No, the officiating just sucked, period. Uh, there are times where they let both teams play, and that's good. I like to encourage that, but do your job. And then just don't, like, allow blatant calls and no calls, like blatant just fouls and violations to occur to make up for a missed call on the other end. Because that's what we just ended up seeing a whole lot of. It was just like, well, we, they got away with, like, Two things that probably shouldn't be called on that end, so we're just gonna give them to him here. And it's like, what are you? Literally, what are you doing? Like, Stay consistent. Yeah, just <laughs> please, 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 like, God, find the refs twenty twenty one through twenty twenty two.
Um, back to this whole Laker game fiasco. They played terribly, somehow squeaked out a win. Steph Curry needs some help. This man is playing ungodly basketball, and, and like just... I don't know, man. Andrew Wiggins is just not enough help for him. He, he needs more help than Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole, who looks nice, by the way. Most improved player on that roster is Jordan Poole. Man's is cooking people. Almost dunked on LeBron. Would have been an easily ESPN top... It would have been the top play of the year. He cooked Wesley Matthews with this really nice in-and-out cross and took LeBron baseline on the right side of the floor, went up with his right hand and missed the dunk. Didn't get blocked. He missed because he took off from a little too far and jammed it on the right side of the rim, which happens to be the longest side of the rim, like when you're approaching it that way. Like if he had angled that a little sharp, like a little more to his left, would have brought his he would have brought it cleaner over the more narrow part of the rim and just yammed that ball. Through. No one else touched it. Dude, that play would have been nasty. And, you know, would have, could have, should have, might be one of the coolest mess dunks out there. If you guys have a cooler mess dunk, leave it in the comments below. Uh, send us a link. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, anyway... Lakers win. Steph Curry really should be MVP. He had a really nice step back. Uh, LeBron looks like he's in pain. Uh, he just looks out of shape and tired. Anthony Davis looks out of shape. The Lakers are in serious trouble. They play great defense. Uh, another candidate for most improved... He's probably not going to get it, but he really should be considered as Kyle Kuzma. Oh, man. Like, Kuz... Hats off to you, man. Way to play in your role. Way to just be good at everything you need to be good at. I know that just sounds like super, like, oh, great analysis. Yeah, like... The guy plays his role well. He, really he knows he's not a star. It's okay. He's like, I don't need to be a scorer all the time. What can I do to help my team? I can be a great on-ball defender. I can be a great team defender. I can move into help position, I can double teammates, I can pick up slack, I can crash the boards, I can box somebody out so somebody else can get a rebound. I can go get a rebound. I can make a good outlet pass. He's doing all these things. He's doing all these little things that separate good players from great players. And it's really showing because he's becoming a great player. He's starting to make his open shots and even though he's not scoring as much as he thought he would or would like to, his points have a lot more impact because they're coming at a lot more timely basis. So you really feel, like, the fans feel the weight of those points. Like, he could have, like, 13 points all game. But to some fans, like, when those buckets came, they'll feel like he had much more. And he's just doing a good job of staying consistent of doing these things, just being a good defender and being a good rebounder and just a team player. So, shout out to Kuzma. So, we have the Warriors and the Grizzlies uh, squaring off in the, the final Western Conference single elimination play-in game to determine the eighth seed. That game is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, superstar Steph Curry and his squad of young guys versus John ja Morant. In his squad of young guys. Super fun. Um, I think that Grizzlies team is more talented. But you can't write off Steph Curry. Like, no. He's just a freak, dude. So, um, you know, I'm taking the Warriors in this matchup. But don't be surprised if the Grizzlies win. It's just... It's, it's going to be another close game. Probably a point margin difference of no greater than like three to five. Like, you know how basketball can be like with free throws at the end. They could get up to like maybe it's like 10 or seven points or something, but it will really be a one or two possession game. Like at the end of it, like the, the margin might be ruined by some late game fouls and some free throws. Um, 
but I expect the Warriors to win that game. And then, if they claim the A seed, they'll be playing Utah. And by clinching the seventh seed this evening, the Lakers will be matched up with Suns. Yeah, Phoenix, which was the the first time that the seventh seed was favored to beat the <laughs> it's minus three hundred. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a lock at <laughs> minus three hundred. Honestly, though. The way the Lakers are playing, putting a bet on Phoenix isn't such a bad idea. Yeah, well, that was odds. Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton actually playing well and wanting to win. You know, that's a really lethal squad against the Lakers team that maybe decides that they want to play basketball sometimes in the third quarter. You can't get away with that in a seven-game series.